Hey guys, welcome back to We Met at Acme. I'm so excited to be here with the person I'm currently stalking, <laughs> the host of Fluently Forward podcast, Shannon McNamara. Hi. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Honored to be here. I'm so happy to be doing this. It all began when I guess someone from your team reached out to me about coming on Fluently Forward. Mm -hmm. And then like the day of or the day before I get like a document yeah. that's like, this is a document to prepare for the episode. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I open it and it's a serious deep dive in the relationship of Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell. Yeah. It was phenomenal. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. Like this isn't because when I usually get brought on podcasts, it's the same sh thing over and over again. It's like, you know, what's your rules? What's your dating advice? Blah, blah, blah. This was such a breath of fresh air. And I feel like we had so much fun with it. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because it is kind of like homework that you're giving to someone to catch up on stuff. But it makes for a very fun episode. And they were a juicy couple to dive into. Like nobody feels mediocre about Dax and Kristen. They've so juicy. Yeah, everyone has strong opinions. And today we're going to be talking about all about celebrity relationships, why they fail and why the small amount that do succeed, succeed. But before we get into that, for my listeners who might be curious about Shannon, Hi. tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with, have you ever been in love? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you ever get anyone saying no? No, and I'm waiting yeah. for it. I yeah. really am. Like maybe like a 20 year old. You could do no. a podcast with like one of those AI chat bots and they'll be like, right. not yet. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. <finally. laughs> um, when was the last time? Um, I guess like a year ago, mm -hmm. probably my last relationship. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's your current relationship status? Single. Okay. And by the way, how old are you and where are oh, you Oh, I'm 29. I live in New York, mm -hmm. over in the West Village, love it there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, single, playing a lot of The Sims. So making other people happy yeah. <laughs> right now, just focusing on that. Okay. <laughs> and how did you get started with your podcast, which talks all about celebrities, does deep dives into like weird um, situations that we're all so interested in or uh, like schemes and scams and schemes of people and just all the things that I love. Yeah. How did you get into it? Yeah, it's kind of like gossip, rumor, right. conspiracy, mm -hmm. like take the headline and then imagine what could be happening instead type of stuff. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, my podcast started after making TikTok videos and enough people on TikTok were like, start a podcast. And then that was the only reason I did it because I didn't. I, th why is there such a stigma around a podcast nowadays? Like you tell someone you have a podcast and they just groan and you're like, ugh great like now I'm that person it's so frustrating yeah. I went to a female founders dinner the other night and I felt like such a um what's that word a shame. imposter oh, yeah imposter, imposter. Syndrome. and shame <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I was like everyone's going around they're like I invented the newest vegetable like I put together <laughs> like a veggie burger that like has no veggies like I you know started a like a new workout and I've done this and I'm like, yeah, I have a podcast. You like, should have steered into the skit even more and been like, I sell pictures of my feet online and just like made <laughs> eye contact with like a CEO and been like, what, what now? I really <laughs> should have. And by the way, I plan to do that at some point in my life because the one thing I know about myself that is perfect <laughs> is my feet. I'm telling you. <laughs> really? Yes. Huh. Yes. Like but I feel like those guys, they like a little some. Are you a high arch? Are you a flat foot? What's your niche? I'm in between. I'm in between. It's just that my toes have a beautiful sequence and really they're like, good. they're long and skinny, but not in a creepy way. Oh, you know, so the perfect foot next door that the everyone wants. Perfect foot next door yeah. that everyone wants. The girl foot experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually have a funny story when I was first dating my husband. He we were like in bed and it was like this romantic moment. And he's like, he's like, you know, I just have to tell you. And I was like, I have perfect feet. <laughs> And he was like, what? <laughs> like, that's not, that's, <laughs> no, that, wasn't what that was. literally couldn't have been further what, than what I was about to say. And I was like, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, no, they're good. Anyway, so I felt like an imposter and I hate it because like my podcast has, thank God, knock on wood, become like a full-time job. Yeah. But to everyone else, when you were like, oh, I have a podcast, literally anyone can have a podcast. So that could mean like yeah. you sell clothes on Poshmark, which if that's a full-time job, go off queen, like keep selling your clothes. But 
you know, it doesn't get like the same respect these days, which is annoying. Yeah, especially too. I mean, now like I am dating guys now and yeah. anytime you tell a guy, it's two things, either that you have a podcast or that you work in comedy, immediately they're like, I have that, like I've done that too. And it's like, no, but like it's my full-time job and your last episode was two years ago and you have three reviews. Yeah. Like, so you don't really have a podcast, but right. like, this is my career. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let me tell you about like my podcast of and course. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's something out there, but I like it. I like the world of podcasting. Yeah. You do really well Thanks. at podcasting. I can't wait for you to release more. So let's talk about people who aren't us okay. and let's get right into it. Hold on. Let me just have a cough. <laughs> I had like a cold two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. The phlegm is still coming up. It's it's awful. Yeah, nice and pretty. Um, okay. So first, let's just do the general of why relationships fail. And then we'll kind of end on the, a better note, not end, but continue on a better note of why the small amount that succeed do. So there's a few reasons why celebrity relationships fail. The first, and I feel like this is the the biggest one, and tell me what you think, is vanity like anyone who wants to become an actor and then like you get into the whole Meghan Markle thing which we're not going to go down that road because that's a whole thing mm -hmm. um you know is a narcissist in a way right not necessarily a narcissist but somebody who really wants to be who wants the center to wants to be the center of attention for the most part right mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong there are some actors and like who you know it's their craft not their um like entire being yeah you know like i'm, I'm trying well, to think you can of an tell like that. who that is you know like, like a Matt chalamet is kind of like mm. he's not on instagram he's not mm. shelling stuff mm -hmm. who else um i feel like matt damon kind of like just because he's not like he doesn't his like He's not like out in the scene more than he has to be. I, I think of like. it as like whenever I do deep dives on people and I go onto their Wikipedia page, I hate to say this because he's such a reprehensible human being, but Shia LaBeouf, mm -hmm. like he's somebody or examples of him, if they're doing indie projects and indie films and you don't really see them on a red carpet, but in the past couple of years, they've done like mini projects at Sundance or something. I consider that typically an actor who like cares about the craft rather than caring about the fame and the success. Right, right. Like this is so niche, but you are like the queen of niche. So I feel like you'll get this. <laughs> Do you remember Emile Hirsch? No. Okay. He was like, wait, is this, this the politician? No, oh. he was this like actor who's like kind of on the short side. He was in a Lords of Dogtown. He was in the one about the neighbor, the girl next door. Okay. who he falls for. I actually, I wrote, I think I wrote this down as like a note for this episode. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, just actors who care about the craft versus actors who care about fame. But anyway, you get the gist. Like it's similar to politicians too. Like anyone who says I want to be president, like you shouldn't be president. The exactly. only person who should be president is someone that we have to drag into that position, mm -hmm. kicking and screaming. Cause like their soul is so good and they're actually a good person. Cause yeah. a good person wouldn't, want to be like number one with all eyes on them right that's true yeah. that's true my, my only caveat was like i feel like obama wanted to be president but he's phenomenal like i i love him yeah so i don't know Bring him he's back. Like the, we could yeah. use a little dose i know obama he's like right the one now. exception yeah but so yeah so these are both people who like care a lot about their own image for the most part and are selfish a little bit because they have to be right mm -hmm. to like get ahead in their career like they have to be competitive they have to hope that the other person yeah. doesn't get the part that they get and, and whatnot but they're also which is funny because you would imagine somebody like that would really want a trophy wife but i feel like they also care so much about vanity that they have to have somebody a partner who's also well esteemed like they wouldn't just date somebody who isn't well known a lot of these people right no i agree and then well, I guess we'll we'll keep going on why they fail, but then we'll do the contrast. I think too much temptation and like some people might be listening and they're like, well, if they're really loyal, then like temptation doesn't matter. But like we're not getting hit on by Brad Pitt. 
You know what I mean? Speak for yourself, baby. <laughs> no, yeah, we're definitely not. And also, too, I think, like, not only do the lines of, like, monogamy blur in Hollywood, I also think the lines of orientation, like, sexuality blur. Mm. Like, I think it was I think it was the celebrity memoir book club girls who said, what is sexuality when everyone's a 10? You know, like, right. if you're, and everyone's hot around you. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I'm like, I would want like one of everything. Like they're all hot. No, I agree. Like I would for sure like have an affair with Emrata if she like approached me for it. Yeah. I would consider it. And I think the biggest thing is like all of these people are like hall passes for normal people (laughs) right (laughs) yeah and it's funny because some celebrities go on interviews and they ask like who is your celebrity hall pass you can't ask that to someone because like they're just one you probably have a friend in common exactly but they always answer and then they end up dating that person yeah it's just their way of manifesting which is so rude like our way of manifesting is so different (laughs) as normal like humans tom holland just said the word zendaya and it happened and i'm building everybody on the sims and living with them and crossing my fingers that it works out you know and nothing is not it's yet. so unfair <laughs> but it will but it will but yeah so it's like too much temptation but the temptation is absurd absurd temptation like if you think about the whole jennifer aniston brad pitt angelina triangle like everyone could have predicted that you put the two And I'm not saying Jennifer is not as beautiful as them, but like the two hottest that other people rank as the hottest people in Hollywood. And that movie movie together married sexy. Like even when they're eating dinner in that movie, it's sexy. Like everything they're doing in that movie is sexy. Did you hear about how um, Penn Badgley in the latest season of You didn't want to do sex scenes because he felt like it wouldn't be fair to his wife? And then it spurred all of this discourse online where people were saying, um, Did he get caught cheating and that's why he's not doing it? Mm. Are those sex scenes really intimate? Is it actually perverse of him to say that because it shouldn't be sexual to him? He should just be doing his job. I was like, there's just too much discourse. Like, I think it's fine. You don't need a sex scene. You can easily like pan away when people are kissing and then just infer what's happening. But it's interesting because some actors are like sex scenes like I get hard during them I get like turned on you're hooking up with someone and then other actors will say absolutely not there's a million people around you it's the most g-rated thing ever so it's hard to tell like is it easy to fall in love on a movie set or is that just your coworker? I can't tell I think it's just like chemistry like I bet you something happened on a previous season of you where like either his like Ooh. actress got the wrong idea or like something or because his wife is an actress right one of the she's one is it Domino Kirk or something? Yeah. She's like Jemima Kirk's sister. I'd imagine she's an actress too, but maybe I'm I'm making her an actress and she's not. But maybe it was a conversation where it was like, would he be okay? Like maybe Penn was being asked, would you be okay with your wife doing sex scene? And he was like, I wouldn't want her to do it. So I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Maybe they both but signed But that's giving something. him too much credit, I feel. Right. Also, I don't know. I'm trying to, although I'm trying to think like, uh, I would have fallen in love with the character of love last season. So oh, like for sure. maybe She's it was hot. her, maybe it was someone else. Yeah, Who I feel knows? like it was her. I'm, yeah. I'm getting this weird, I have like psychic abilities. Yeah, yes. I'm getting, um, okay, ego. Well, this is obvious, but like ego gets in the way. And this is like, you know, it, it blends into the next one, which is like one gets more successful than the other. Like the Anna Ferris, Chris Evans situation, right? Chris Pratt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oops. Oh, sorry. There, there's so many of the Chris's so out many there. There's so many Yeah. But, and they're all like weirdly similar, but, um, because like they were dating, you know, he was like an actor, but not like an Anna Ferris. He wasn't a household name. I think he was in like Parks, Parks and, and Rec. Rec. Yeah. And he was just kind of like new on the scene. Mm-hmm. And he then, was like a little out of shape, but not really out of shape. They just say that when he got into shape, you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden he blows up and I feel like he dropped her. A lot of people feel that way. I feel that way too. And I also think him and Jennifer Lawrence definitely hooked up when they did, um, that like space movie together. The name is Mm. slipping away from me right now, but I don't know. I just, everybody was really upset with that too, because they were both kind of of the same level. And Anna Faris is like, she's a funny, cool chick. I really like her. And uh, Chris Evans, it's just, it's, oh my God, it happened to me. Chris Pratt. It upsets a lot of us when somebody gets like too big for their britches. And you want to imagine that like, if something, I think, when we saw that happening and it steals a fear in you because you're like, I want the best for my partner. 
I want the world for them. But then what happens if your partner gets like a huge bonus? And then you start to get a little bit nervous because of situations like Anna and Chris happening. And you're like, ooh, like just how successful can my partner get until they think that they're going to like trade in for the newer model? Because like they're too good for me now. Yeah. Which is sad. Yeah. That is really sad. Yeah. (laughs) The whole idea of like it being too public, like... Which is funny because now with Instagram, like we all have the ability to make our relationship public. It's not just actors, but for some reason that, and maybe it does, I don't know the stats, but that doesn't break up relationships in the same way that the celebrity public breaks up relation. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I'm curious too. Like what, like how do you decide how much of your relationship to put out there? I put out as much as I'm allowed to. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I don't care. Like I, not to like be such like a Dax, you know, but like I, if, if like my reality and realness can help other people, um, in a positive way, meaning like show them like they deserve this or in like a, hopefully still positive way, which is like, we also have arguments and troubles and fights, then that's wonderful. Like the only thing that I don't share is like, and I, you know, make this joke often, but like, I'm not going to describe his dick. Like, I'm not going to like tell the world like medical information about my, like, I'm not going to like take it to a level, which no HIPAA violations. Exactly. Which would (laughs) not be okay with him. And like, if I'm ever going to talk about something like, like last night I did like a portion of an episode and I was like, do you mind if I talk about like my sex, the sex positions that I like? And he was like, Oh, okay. And I was like, but just then go, can you go into the other room? <laughs> yes. Because like, I don't want like to see, to have looks from you on the couch, you know, but like, I'm, I'm willing to, I mean, when you're in a relationship, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, my last relationship, things with the podcast weren't as big. But when my ex and I broke up over the summer, people online were like trying to figure it out. And I remember some person was like, oh, yeah, like, LOL, that Greece trip they took together. And it was just a one off comment. But I was like, what does it mean? Is it weird that we went to Greece? Is like, do people break up after they go there? Yeah. Like, what does it mean? And then I was like, oh, like, now I'm never going to post anything if I ever get into a relationship. But um. I I love seeing like I'm also a creep. So like I love seeing other people's stuff. And I was following you for a while. And I remember the first couple of pictures you posted with Steven, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, they're definitely gonna get married. I just like knew for a fact. And sometimes you can tell. Yeah. And I love just like being creepy. So if I'm gonna be creepy, I feel like I have to give it back. So that's kind totally. of the, the way of the world. But I think that when celebrities go too far into the Dax Kristen or Mila Kunis Ashton Kutcher thing, it's when Like, I want to know about sex. I want to know about arguments. I want to know about love. But whenever they start talking about, like, I don't know, what's that, like, dick cheese or, like, anything gross? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're trying to be relatable. So they're like, oh, we're, like, we're just, like, farting in our household. Smegma? Smegma. (laughs) Yeah. So if you're talking about that, it's too far. Talking about not showering. Like, I feel like sometimes celebrities want to be relatable. So they just are so disgusting. And it's like, you could talk about love without always having to be crass because you can be relatable without being crass, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And by the way, it's so funny because we were just talking about Tinks because you guys just had coffee. She also knew from like the first photo that we were going to get married. You've gotten that from people. I I felt it like in my bones. Yeah. I remember that picture when you guys like moved one time. Yeah. I was like, that's such a good pose. You were like on the box kissing him. I was like, that's a good photo. That's so funny. And that was probably from like three years ago. Well, I mean, I feel like I dated so many people. I don't know how long you've been following me, but I dated a lot of people. And so if it wasn't, if that wasn't going to happen, that would have been, that would have been crazy. <laughs> I would have had to go back and be like, well, it didn't work out again. Um, okay. And then lastly, the classic lie of it's too difficult because we're both filming in different places. Do you believe that ever? No, that's always just PR in mm-hmm. my mind for like, they're not going to say the actual reason, especially now that we know how much of these, can I curse on here? Obviously. Okay, now that we know how much of these fuckers are flying around in their private jets. Right. What do you mean you can't make it work? Like some of you guys are seeing each other like two times a day and you're taking two different private jet trips to do it. Like you can do whatever you want. Right. So yeah, that's if, bullshit. Yeah, if celebrities can't make it work with all of their money and all of their resources, then none of us would be able to, but I, we make it work. I know. And I think that 
PR needs to get a new line because we're on to them for that. Like yeah. they could say literally anything else, but every time it's like, it was too difficult with their schedules. It's like what you talk about on your podcast when you like, when they say like, oh yeah, they're very much in love. Yeah. I'm like, nobody said, at least like when Gwyneth Poucher and Chris Martin split the conscious uncoupling, everybody was like, I hate this language. At least it's different. At least they're giving us something new. Totally. Yeah. Okay, and then why the small amount that succeed do? The similar shared experience of being famous. I think that, you know, this could actually be helpful in a way. It's like this just, you know, bonding over knowing what life is like for you. And I feel like sometimes when you are a celebrity. I mean, I don't know, but I'd imagine that like you want someone to understand and not have to explain it to them. Yeah. And I really like celebrities who I think, uh, Emma, oh my God, Emma Stone and Margot Robbie are both married to men who are in the industry, but they're not like actors walking the red carpet. Yeah. Although I've heard allegedly that Margot Robbie and her husband are divorcing. <gasps> who knows that's just a rumor I wonder if it's because of Brad Pitt I heard that he was like massively hitting on her and once upon a time in Hollywood and like her husband would come to the set because he like didn't like him doing that I heard that from my news source which is your podcast no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's it's funny how I spread stuff and then like everybody repeats yeah. it. It's like, oh, I don't know, just heard it like right, once. Right. Who knows what happens? Um, um, but I, li I like that because they're with people who get it, but they're not with like egomaniacs, probably. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. But but then you'd have to make sure that there wasn't like a one person benefiting too much from that partnership or like with, you know, false motives or maybe that one person is like a PA or I don't know, whatever, yeah. but wants to move out, you know, like, like when I would Demi be Lovato skeptical. was um, engaged to Max Eric, I think his yeah. name was. And then old tweets came out where he was saying, Selena Gomez is actually hotter than Demi. I want to marry yeah. Selena. All of this crazy stuff. Like that must be a celebrity's biggest nightmare is marrying someone or being engaged to them. And they were like a secret fan of yours. Although I guess it worked for Hailey Bieber. So yeah, true. <laughs> Um, okay. Another reason that the small amount that succeed do is they have an open relationship, which really is just an arrangement. I feel. Um, yeah. and I, I noted Will Smith and Jada because I mean, I don't, I don't really know their real situation, but it seems like they have some sort of arrangement. Yes, they definitely do. And August is somewhere floating around that entanglement situation. It's funny, too, because I think the majority of celebrities must have some sort of open relationship or understanding. But Will and Jada get so clowned on by everyone for it, which is a shame because like they're actually talking about it authentically rather than like hiding behind this PR lingo. But it's also interesting how our perception of celebrities changes if we think they're in an open relationship or not. So back when Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet were together. And I love them. I also love celebrity couples where the wife is older than the man. I'm like, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. um, but rumors came out. And I remember making a TikTok video about it that he was cheating on her. And after that TikTok video, I had so many people DM me, like a friend of a friend was on the set of Aquaman. And like, I know somebody who hooked up with him, like all of these people. And everyone on the TikTok comments was saying, well, it seems like they have an open relationship. It seems like they must have an open relationship, even though there was nothing to back that up. But then when it comes out with Adam Levine and Beati Prinsloo, nobody's saying open relationship. They're like, yeah, that's definitely cheating. So it's funny how I think a cool celebrity couple, people will be like, oh yeah, they're definitely open, mm. but a more traditional celebrity couple, they're like, oh, they're traditional and it's cheating if it happens. So yeah. it's hard to tell who's doing what. Well, it's also hard when like, just to, to talk about the Bahati Adam thing, like it's hard when she's pregnant and that news comes out. Like that's obviously gonna be treated differently. And the child's name. Like right. wanting to name exactly. Her like, like that's, and that's yeah. bad. And we're gonna get into the cheating scandal situation. Um, but also another arrangement is like if one person is in the closet and feels like they can't come out due to the nature of their job, which shouldn't be a thing in 2023. One of the success story couples you put on there is, I think, one of those couples. OK, hold on. Let me look because <laughs> I was going to at the end go through these couples and um, 
instead of the rapid fire poll questions and have you say which ones were going to last or not. Okay. So we have this list of couples. I wish you could see this. I, I guess if you're watching on YouTube, if you zoom in, <laughs> but, um, Okay, so Shannon just said that one of these couples, she thinks that one of the... Okay, give me a hint by saying if it's the woman or the man. The man Okay, is allegedly... So I think that the and alleged... And this isn't me, this is like Alleged in the items. closet man yeah. is either mm -hmm. David Beckham, don't confirm or deny yet, or, or um, Matthew Broderick. Did I get it? I, I can tell you now. Yeah, you can tell me. Yes, one of those was correct. Wait, do I tell you which one? Yeah, now tell me. Matthew Broderick, allegedly. Yeah, I mean, but what does this mean for SJP? Nice life in the West Village, easy sure. living. I, I don't know. Sounds not that yeah, bad to I me. Don't, I don't, so I, I know why it seems that way. Like he's been on Broadway, like whatever. He's like a theater kid at heart. I don't know. I I. Listen to the Celebrity Memoir Book Club podcast episode about Jennifer Grey. Yes. And they seem to have had a very legit relationship where he kind of like was a fuckboy to her. Yeah. So I doubt that for some reason. Who I don't knows? know. I've just heard different rumors of mm -hmm. like, you know, somebody went to the theater, saw him. There was like one rumor about how he was sitting in the audience watching a play and his date was a man and they were like very much PDA. But once again, maybe it's open. Mm. yeah that's just the thing you never know with these celebrities i think it's all yeah. shades of gray yeah very interesting mm -hmm. okay they are um okay we did the hiding something this so these are actually my husband's suggestions i made him like weigh in last night he was like i was like what could make a celebrity couple succeed he was like maybe if they met once they were already famous then like there would be like less competitiveness and like they had more in common than just their celebrity status. Like mm -hmm. for example, um, I'm trying to think of a couple, like, I don't know that um, Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, which I know we're are not married, but we spoke about briefly on my episode on your podcast. I feel like they have friends in common. Do you know what I mean? Like before they were anything like I feel like and I mean normal friends, not celebrity friends. Yeah, because it's hard because some celebrities, right? There's different avenues in which people become celebrities, as I find when I'm like doing the research for different episodes. I feel like you either went to like Harvard Westlake, like you grew up in the kind of Nepo baby area, ritzy ditzy, you end up being famous through that avenue or you get famous um, because you went to theater acting school, you just got lucky, or you end up famous because you came in through like the comedy angle or the music angle. So it's hard to tell. Like, I feel like there's, those are the different friend groups kind of in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah. Like if you're in the same friend group, um, being in the same arena versus like a singer and an actress or a comedian and an actress. So like, two actors or two singers or two like like a machine gun Kelly and Megan Fox who allegedly just broke up but I don't know if that's true like difficult because she's an actor or was yeah and he's a singer like I feel is like is she an actress though like what has she even done I don't recently? know she's nothing yeah but she was at one point yes I'll never forget when she was Brianna Wallace of Wallace Department Store Wallace's do you know that movie no oh my gosh <laughs> I hope someone got that reference it's from um uh, Holiday in the Sun, the Mary Kate and Ashley movie. Oh God. I remember when I did an episode on Megan Fox, she, <laughs> when she was younger, she once got in trouble for shoplifting Mary Kate and Ashley makeup and then talk about manifestation. And then she ended up doing a movie. Oh, with that's hilarious. <laughs> I, know, I didn't funny. even know they had makeup back then. They were yeah, like 12. Yeah. Um, but so I, I feel yeah, like that works. Me. The only thing I feel like wouldn't work. Cause I agree. Right. You normally see like singer with singer, actor with actor. Um, I feel like for comedian, it wouldn't work just because I feel like male comedians, no shade, but like a little bit of shade. I feel like they're a different breed. And I feel like a male comedian with a female comedian would be like, my jokes are funnier than you. Oh, or like, for sure. if you're getting famous, it's only because like you're a woman and it's helping you out. Like I've only been like sideways in the comedy scene and the guys there are like, uh, I don't know. 
yeah a little funky yeah i mean i've dated a comedian and i 10 out of 10 would never again yeah. <laughs> um and then having different strengths i don't really know what i meant by this but i guess just like i don't know maybe i i still i don't I still don't really understand <laughs> what i mean by this okay so let's talk about celebrity relationships with cheating scandals mm-hmm. um and then also I want to dive into your notes a little bit for this. Shakira and Gerard PK. Gerard PK. Yeah. Um, Adam Levine, Bahati, Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel, Beyonce and Jay-Z, Prince William and Kate, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, which I don't know if that's actually true or not. I guess a lot of these we don't really for sure know. But, so, and some yeah. of them we do. Like, I remember when the Justin Timberlake, Jessica Biel stuff was coming out. Everyone was like, these are rumors. These are rumors. And there were actual photos of him out at like a club. I remember they were on some second level balcony holding hands, kissing, dancing. Right. And even with those photos out, they're like, how dare you spread a rumor? Sorry, I have eyeballs and they're holding yeah. hands. Like, what do you want from me, dude? Just admit that you are philandering on your wife. I think that's the craziest thing. And they actually gaslit all of us to believe that that wasn't a problem. Right? Like, we all walked away from that being like, oh, sorry, sorry. You're right. You're right. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, what? It's. I'm always so fascinated by how celebrities, because like, Let's be honest, almost all of them are going to have a cheating scandal. I don't think I don't even have celebrity crushes because even in my mind, I'm like, oh, they would cheat on me. So, like, I can't even daydream about it because even in my daydream, they're cheating on me. Yeah. So anyway, but um, they all handle it differently. And Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel, like people forget that cheating ever even happened. And I don't know. And and it definitely, by the way, where there's smoke, there's fire, like cheating in these particular couples like happened way more than once for that's just what we saw. And also if you're blatantly holding someone's hand and dancing in a crowded club, like this isn't your first rodeo cheating. Like Mm -hmm. you're brave enough to do it like that because you've probably been doing it for a while. And at that point, are you trying to get caught? Cause it seems like it. Yeah. So there's the them. So I guess Shakira found out she left she left and she has been so fantastic because I love it when people get messy because it's great content for the podcast, to be honest. She released this mixtape and she just talks about everything in the mixtape where she's basically like, you couldn't handle a she-wolf, um, you know, two fours don't make up one me. Like, I'm a 10. You're basically the essence of it was you're being a little bitch boy. And then I think his mother, so her, they never actually married but she said like mother-in-law in the song was like neighbors and she put up a scarecrow on her balcony to face the ex-mother's house basically and was blasting the diss track mis- mixtape in her house for like all day. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then in it too, she says something, I don't know much about designer brands, but she's like, you used to have a Rolex. Now you have a Casio and like you used to have a Lamborghini and now you've got like some shit ass car. And then he showed up with the bad brand of watch wearing the bad brand of car that she referenced. So they're both being really messy. I love it. I think it's great. I mean, I just don't understand how she never knew before. It sounds like it was something that was happening for a long time. Were there any blind items about it before? Yes, there were so many. There were so many. And people were really confused on why they even got together because Shakira was like at the top of her game. I think she's 10 years older than him. And he was just kind of like some soccer player. It's not like he's number one in the world. So I think a lot of people from the beginning were like, what the hell are you doing with him? And I wonder not to like excuse him because what he did was wrong. But that psyche of for 10 years, people saying you're reaching, you're reaching, she's settling she's settling like she's the big deal you're no one he still shouldn't have cheated but i'm just so fascinated on like that's probably why he did it i would assume like oh yeah men cheat to get their like masculinity back to get their power back if they're insecure yeah those are like the top three reasons i would say yeah and then beyonce and jay-z he cheated on her Debatably, with maybe I've, I've heard Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes, this was some people probably say. from your podcast. I mean, um, if you if you haven't yet Googled Jay Z and Gwyneth Paltrow and just put it in Google Images, you will be really surprised at all of the photos of their friendship together. Like, yeah, they hung out a lot. But then there was like another woman who was supposedly Becky. I think that there's been tons of them. I think Jay Z is uh philandering as well for sure but then like what is beyonce doing like she's beyonce i know but can i say something that will probably make me sound like the biggest pick me in the world i think i'd stay with him too just because they are such 
a partnership, you know? And I wonder too, like people say that about Beyonce, which that's because Beyonce does have this otherworldly quality to her. Anytime you just need one name to be recognized, like you're something special. But like, let's imagine this too. Bill and Hillary Clinton, there's no way they've slept in the same bed in the last like 20 years. Like, I also think that they're a couple that's just a partnership. And I think society just kind of is like, yeah, you two can do more and go farther together than apart, even if it's like not romantic. I just hope that Beyonce, I don't know, has like a hot guy on the side because I feel like she deserves it after what Jay-Z has been doing, allegedly. Yeah, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. I definitely get that point. I think that if there is, if it's good for business, sure. Um, I think definitely for Bill and Hillary. Um, but like... I think there's part of me that wants to just see, and it's not like I want Beyonce to like be mean to Jay-Z at this point. It's her problem because she's just let it happen over and over again. Not to start like not to come at Beyonce, but like if you allow something, it'll happen. I just want her to get hers. Yeah. But you know what's surprising so far that I can think of the only celebrity woman to leave is Shakira. I mean, like, look at this list. Jessica Biel, did she leave? No. Kate, did she leave? No. Um, Biati, did she leave? No. So yeah. there must be some sort of, like, sick juice in the Hollywood tap water that just, like, makes you stay with a cheating partner. Yeah, but then it's, like, the reverse and when the woman's cheating. Oh, my God. People go insane. Well, well, I want to, yeah. Okay. Like, the Kristen Stewart cheating thing. People wanted her dead, <laughs> not just dead, but like burned yeah. slowly so they could watch and laugh. Like Holy. it was crazy. And also that guy, like he was in a marriage as well. So it wasn't like, you know, she was the only one stepping out. He was also way older than her. And he was also technically her boss. And I feel like even in the we're still kind of shitty to celebrities. I'm like, not me. I'm like, who? Who's saying all this stuff about celebrities? But um. Yeah, I just, we were awful to her. And I, I like to think that if it happened in this day and age, we wouldn't. But I don't know, the way that people also wanted that Sumner girl to burn alive, I was like, and none of the Adams getting a percentage of it. You know, it's always right. the girl. No, of course. Of course. But I, I never forgot. Like, I still, when Maroon 5 comes on the radio, I'm like, you fucking loser. Right. But I... Oh, can I say, you know who never forgot about the Kristen Stewart thing? Tell me. Have you looked up Donald Trump's tweets? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates her. <laughs> he went and he would tweet Rob Pattinson every day. He'd be like, yeah. Rob Pattinson, come to Miss Universe. None of these girls would cheat on you. Kristen Stewart cheated on you like a dog and she will again. Is He didn't become president, but instead he just became like a Wendy Williams type of talk show host. I think that would have been so much better for everyone. Oh, so much better. Yeah. That's where he would really shine. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then you brought up Macaulay Culkin and Mila Kunis dating for so long. Yeah, everyone loved that relationship because no shade, but, you know, they were like Macaulay Culkin. Like, what what does he have that makes Mila Kunis want to stay with him for so long? And I always think it was interesting, too, because they were both child actors. I mean, obviously, Home Alone and everything with him. And Mila Kunis, I think she lied about her age to get on that 70s show. So she was on the younger side when she started acting as well. So I do wonder about that, too. Like, the life of being a child actor, I'm sure it's incredibly traumatic. Like, I think it just changes the course of, like, your entire life. Mm. So I'm kind of curious about the people that end up together were they both child actors or did they become famous at a certain age? Cause there's that famous quote that says, um, you get stunted at the age of your trauma basically. And for a lot of celebrities, they get stunted. I think Taylor Swift has said like, yeah, I'm kind of like a 16, 17 year old because that's when I got really famous. And Justin Bieber kind of acts out like a twerpy little kid because that's when he got famous. So you kind of stay stunted at that age. Oh, that's really interesting. I yeah. hadn't heard that before. I think for the Macaulay Culkin and Mila Kunis thing, I think that he's cool. You know what I mean? Mm. I think that's what it what it was that drew them together. Like I see him like having like a just cool like swaggy i think he was like in the drug scene in a while um for a while oh and that actually reminds me drugs is another um reason that i had put that i feel that um relationships fail mm. but um i think that he was like in that scene for a while i also think not that like it's cool to do drugs but you know what i mean <laughs> and i think that um he also 
and Mila like have like the mutual friend thing going on. Yeah, I see that, you too. know, um, but like going back to the drugs thing, like then there are couples that I feel like like Selena and Justin or like, you know, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. Like yeah. there's like these couples that they, you know, and like celebrities get drugs thrown at them like left and right that like that's their MGK and Megan Fox. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. Allegedly. I mean, they've they've done they've talked about doing what was it like ayahuasca or DMT, like certain drugs like that together. I think sex also bonds people together, right? Like Pamela Anderson, Tommy Lee. So any celebrity that's I think Angelina Jolie and like anyone she's ever dated, but like Billy Bob Thornton, I think sex and drugs like really bond people together. Ooh, and rock and roll. There we go. Now it's a trifecta. <laughs> but yeah, I think it bonds people together, but I don't think it like cements them into the future, but it, it gives for really cool one shot celebrities in Hollywood. Yeah. And you said that, and I rarely hear you say this, but you said that Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are a good couple. What makes a good couple to Shannon? I, I know. I normally don't like celebrities at all, or I'm just like a little bit apprehensive of them. Ashton Kutcher has done a lot of good work with his company, Thorn. That's all about... Um, child safety online and like hunting down child predators and using technology to do that. And Mila Kunis is really philanthropic. And just in interviews, she's very much like, I think her parents just raised her really well. And she's a celebrity that keeps it real. Like, you know, that she would treat wait staff normally and tip well, and like, I don't know, roll up her elbows and do charity work, or she doesn't think that she's better than anyone. And I really like them together. Whereas with like Dax and Kristen, they're also Hollywood's relatable talk about my relationship couple. But I think Dax is like an egomaniac. And I don't really get that from Mila and Ashton because you don't see them flaunting their stuff that much. Like there was yeah. this cool B. Jack Novak movie and Ashton Kutcher was in it. And I didn't even know he was in it versus with other celebrities like it's plastered everywhere. They're talking about it. They can't stop promoting it. They just seem a little bit low key to me, which makes me like them. Yeah. But to play devil's advocate, not every actor is allowed to be low key. Like some actors are in contract to promote certain things. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So I feel like they get off easy. That or they maybe just they like, just have so much that 70s show money that they don't have to do those exactly, contracts. That yeah. they're like that they bake into their contracts for when he decided, OK, I'll do the BJ Novak movie. He was like, I'm not promoting this like I'm not this. But like, that's what you have to agree to to get me in the movie because I'm Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, that's a good point. So many times you're like, oh, that celebrity is like so up their own ass. And it's like, no, that, that's their job. Like they right. have to do 10 different interviews. This right. Weekend. Yeah. Right. I know. That's what's like. It's like even as like a and I don't consider myself an influencer, but like as someone who has a following on Instagram and like sometimes I make my money through ads, like I have to talk to the camera and be like, hey guys, like I just did this like treatment and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I have to do that because I'm being paid to do that. But like, I don't want to do that, but I'm going to do that because I need the money. You know what I mean? Or even certain weeks, like having to promote the show and be like, listen to my voice, talk about this. I'm like, oh God, I like hate this, but yeah. it is work, you know? So yeah. yeah, I could see how those lines get blurred. Okay, instead of doing rapid fire poll questions, we're going to do rapid fire, which celebrity couples you're out of. I'm going to name a celebrity couple. You're going to tell me if you think they're going to stay together or not. And then will you, you give your opinion too? Yeah. Okay. okay, Sarah Jessica Parker, Matthew Roderick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do. Th I see them happily together. She's got a bunch of shoes and he admires them too. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> isn't there another, isn't like DVF and her husband an arrangement or like there's some fashion couple arrangement. Situation. Oh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah. Diane, yeah. Um, Denzel Washington and Pauletta Pearson. I don't know much about them. I'll mm -hmm. give them a yes. Yeah, they seem solid. I actually met um, one of the daughters and she's great. I don't know. Maybe there's only one daughter, but oh, I met okay. You a can daughter. tell a lot about someone by their children. That's mm -hmm. why I think Tom Hanks is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, why? What What do you think about Colin? Oh, because well, Chet, Chet Hanks, Hanks is yeah, like yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos. I'll say no. Mm. Just because I feel like I could see her doing a little eat, pray, love situation. Really? Yeah. I feel like the opposite. Really? I just imagine like she's been doing the same thing for so long that I could see her doing like a 180 and like just different path in life. Yeah, I feel like she really feels like a need to impress him, mm. which is so interesting because I feel like he has like that 
that male insecurity chip of like, she's clearly more successful than him. I don't even know what he does. I, if he's an actor, it's news to me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he might like, he's always like on the verge of like cheating mm. because of that. Yeah. I will say sometimes like when I listen to Taylor Swift sing about Joe Alwyn, I'm like, she's so much bigger than him, but he just like, doesn't seem to like give a shit about her, which makes her obsessed with him. So sometimes I feel like that dynamic works maybe interesting i i don't feel that way at all i know i know you go in on taylor i understand why but as a as a swifty and someone who like kind of likes to think that she knows a little bit about taylor i i think joe is so good to her and like so sweet to her and does care a lot about her i don't think he cares about um being less successful though i don't think you know, I, I hope he's sweet to her. I just think he should show it in interviews. Every interview, they're like, so what about Taylor? He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, we're dating. Like, next question. He, I don't think, he, is like a lot. Like, I think they have an agreement where they're like, let's not a, talk about our relationship ever, maybe. ever, ever. I think he could just say, like, like she's great. She's wonderful. And then move on. But he, like, never gives her a compliment. I, I know it sounds crazy, but she's so calculated that I feel like she doesn't want him to because it'll get spun. Oh, maybe the games. Like she's play. yeah. Like she's like, I know, trust me. I know the media. I've been doing this dance. Yeah. Don't say a word. It will get spun. Like our relationship is ours. It's sacred. We don't need this. You know, love she, is ours. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Dax and Kristen. <laughs> Dude, I hope for their sake, they don't end up together. Like they yeah. can use a break from each other. I'm going to vote. No. Right. Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Yeah, I They're like so it. They're so cute. Yeah, They're bring so it on. hot. Kira Sedgwick and Kevin Bacon. I don't know enough about them to have an opinion. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I don't... I, no comment. We wish them well. We wish them well. <laughs> David and Victoria Beckham. Yes, I love them together. Two narcissists who are making it work, you know? They yeah. feed off of each other's vanity. Yeah, but he cheats, I've heard. But I think she's fine with it. Yeah, <laughs> she's so like insular. Like, she's just getting her makeup done, and she's like, "Just be back by five p.m." Don't exactly. Me out. She's yeah. like, "I don't, I can't be bothered." Um, Warren Beatty and Annette Benning. He is such a slut. Oh really? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Really? But I mean, maybe they'll make it work because I think he's been a huge male slut for is like thirty. Is he old years. enough to be a slut? I mean, young enough to be a slut still? Um, no, but he's making it work. We did an old Hollywood blind items episode and uh-huh. he was a big part of it. And like that thing's been all around town. Allegedly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Respectfully. You know, you know what you need to read, which I just read? It's like the OG gossip, but like uh, it's a book. Um, the Many Lives of Marjorie Merriweather Post. Did you post about it recently? Yeah, it, it, the cover, I was like, it. this is my type of book. Yeah. You would love it. Um, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski you're about to break my heart again (laughs) blind items say that she has cheated on him in the past not recently though like maybe six years ago but I think that they'll last I I like them as a couple yeah yeah I just like feel like I don't know it hurts me that he that she would cheat on him but I understand why I think He's a Libra man, and I feel like <laughs> Libra men like a simp for women that they love. Who? What too is she? Much. She's a Pisces. Okay, interesting. And Pisces women are very complex. Yeah, usually. So I feel like Pisces women, and I'm gonna get so much shit for this. I love Pisces women, but I feel like they either go for a guy who isn't going to treat them well and like will cheat on them or the total opposite. Mm. Whereas like they don't really like this guy and they're going to cheat. It's, but like, obviously there's exceptions. There's, I have Pisces women friends in great relationships that are totally normal, but I feel like Pisces are so extreme with love. Like they're so like willing to get hurt or the total opposite. Yeah, I could see that. And Marjorie Mary other posts is a Pisces, just so <laughs> oh, yeah. when you read the book. Um, Maggie Gyllenhaal and Peter Sarsgaard. Yeah, I like him. I like Maggie. She's got good vibes, doesn't she? I like Maggie, too. Someone once told me I looked like Maggie, and I was like, I don't see that at all. Uh-huh. No, I don't see it. At all, but, like, she's cute, but she is, yeah. I don't feel that way. Um, I feel like I have this weird, I feel like Jake Gyllenhaal is, like, jealous that he can't just, like, be normal and be in that relationship mm-hmm. like that. You think he wants to settle down? Uh, I do. Yeah. I think I saw him once in Hollywood, but it, or sorry, uh, on 
Broadway, like down in Soho. Yeah. But it could have been someone else. He has that type of look where like, if you see him out on the yeah, street, yeah, like, it could be. this actually could be. could be anyone. I think he does want to settle down, but I think that like, w- I think that women like don't play the right game, like the game well with him. I know that sounds like anti-women. How would you entice Jake Gyllenhaal? I would do the rules, obviously. <laughs> the we met at Acme rules. I don't know. I don't want to like blame. I've heard that he, women because he's he's a nightmare. Obviously, if he hurt yeah. Taylor, but. and I heard he got kicked out of multiple Soul Cycle classes because he would like hit on all the girls there. I'm sure they yeah. liked it though. Oh I God, mean, I sound like a predator. <laughs> yeah. No, he's a woman. He's a womanizer yeah. for sure. Um, John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. Yeah, I think she's a little nuts and I think he loves it. And he just sits there with his mouth shut, playing the piano, gazing at her and he likes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like he's I used to have this theory with my girlfriends that like there were two, like, a, was it two types of guys or three types of guys? But like guys who have an edge and guys who want someone with an edge. What type is Steven? What do you think? He wants the edge. He wants the edge, but he, <laughs> I think he has it too. But like, I feel like I see that more than other people get to. Do you know what I mean? He's got the hidden edge. He's got the hidden edge. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's two. And, and thank God for us crazy girls, we, we need to seek out the people who want the edge. It's me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm going accountants in your area. <laughs> Let me light up your life. <laughs> Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I think that they'll last. Have you heard all the rumors that he just wants her to be like a kept woman? That's random of him, I feel. Yeah, the blind items are like he hates that she's acting and he just wants her like at home with the kids. I think she's very traditional, though. I think she grew up that way. Um, Yeah. But she's going to be in that new movie based off of the Colleen Hoover book. It ends with us. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I wonder who's going to play the abusive guy it's some guy whose name i'm forgetting right now and is he a podcaster or am i just making that up Mm, i'm gonna have to look it up yeah um ryan gosling and eva mendez (sighs) we did a um like a mini episode on him over on patreon because he's going to be in the barbie movie coming up and it said sadly that like within the last year or two blind items just alleged that he had cheated on her and it made me so sad because i considered them one of the couples that like made it yeah so I still like them together. And she's also older than him. And I, I just like that in Hollywood. He's another one, by the way, who's more about the craft, I feel. Yeah, I think he is, too. Yeah. Do you know his sign? Yeah, I do. What he's, is he's a Scorpio, obviously. <laughs> Sexy. And she's a Pisces. Oh. Yeah. So she, there we go. We figured out the mm-hmm. type of man she chose, the one that's going to yeah, cheat on her. I'm allegedly. So sad. Um, I don't know. Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. The only reason I'm hesitant is because didn't they start because of cheating? Yeah. Oh, my God. I think so. And then they have this story. I forget exactly how it was. But when they talk about how they got together, they say something how like they took an Amtrak from one place to the other because they were on a job together. And like the sexual tension on the Amtrak was so high. I'm like, wow, that's a sexual like an Amtrak is the least. That's like having sexual tension in a doctor's office. Right. So they must have really liked each other to fall in love on an Amtrak. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I they're both so hot. I, I get that. Are they Ryan Reynolds? I'm kind of like he's trying too hard. Well, he's not for me. Oh, yeah. But you know who loves him? Who? Straight man. Yes. They think oh, my he's God. The my hottest. husband loves him. Yeah. He doesn't think he's the hottest, <laughs> but he loves him. He's just like a huge fan. Yeah. Um, well, who do you think is the hottest celebrity? Oh, my God. Conan O'Brien. <laughs> really? That's so random. <laughs> and there's nothing bad about him. And he's just so con- I love a man who can be embarrassed and then be confident that he's embarrassed. Yes, and not yes. care. And that's like none of these traditional Hollywood celebrities. But that is Conan O'Brien. And I like his leather jacket. I think you need an Aries. An Aries. That's my last boyfriend. Oh, I, I like an Aries. <laughs> Not all Aries are created equal um, or are equal. Um, this was so much fun. This was such a nice like step away from what we usually do. And maybe we'll do more of it. Yeah. Because this was so fun. Thanks Can for you, having me on. Of course. Thanks for coming on. Can you leave us with a quote or piece of advice? Oh, oh. Um, 
Does it have to be like profound? No. If you don't have a squatty potty, you could put your heels on and then poop. And it's like you have a squatty <laughs> potty. So you don't need to like drag that whole mess into the bathroom. Yeah. Or you can just get a squatty potty on Amazon. Yeah. Which or I, it's I have to live one by. in every bathroom. And my great grandmother told that one to me. And <laughs> That's I still amazing. I put on heels a few nights ago to put my suitcase up, up <laughs> over my closet. Like That's huge good. heels. And Stephen was like, how did you get that up there? I'm like, I put on these heels. Um, Amazing. Where can everybody find you, follow you, stalk you, just as I have done? Yay. Um, at Fluently Forward, as one word, everywhere. That's it. Amazing. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Bye. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming.